Hello and welcome to Ice Warp. This is the fourth installment in our setting up a mail server series of tutorials. In this video we'll be covering synchronizing Ice Warp with Active Directory. The first step in synchronizing is to make sure you have Active Directory set up. Here's our sample Active Directory under the domain x1solar.com. We've created a main users OU, New York OU, and a nested sales OU to demonstrate the different types of Active Directories you can set up. After Active Directory is in place, we're going to create a matching domain in Ice War. After we have our domain, we're going to click over to the Directory Service tab in the Administrator console. The Directory Service tab will allow us to point IceWarp towards the hostname or IP of Active Directory. After we input the IP, we need to provide IceWarp with the name of the domain administrator and the password. If we hit Test Connection and an error message comes up, it means we have the wrong username or password. If our username and password check out, we get a proper test connection. This shows us the system accounts and anything within our main user's organizational unit. Now that our connection is in place, we can create a custom filter for what's carried over from Active Directory to IceWarp. 95% of the time, user group is the best fit, but if you're using LDAP or have a much more in-depth Active Directory, another option might be the best choice. In this example, we'll select user group. After the import dialog is complete, you'll find that IceWarp has been populated with users. These are any users from Active Directory who have a valid email address. For an email address to be synced with IceWarp, it must have two things, a valid email address and the domain must match up in IceWarp. If we look at our New York OU and nested sales OU in Active Directory, we'll notice that there's a user under each one that wasn't synchronized into IceWarp. With the broad settings we've chosen, IceWarp isn't digging deep enough into Active Directory and picking up the other two users. To make sure we're grabbing everyone within the organizational unit, we have to make some additional specifications in the DN field in IceWarp. In the DN box, we'll type DN equals X1 Solar, DC equals COM. Now if we test our connection, we'll see that the menu is much longer and our two users, John and Susie, are included. If we manually synchronize again, we'll find they are now listed under our domain in IceWarp. Synchronizing with Active Directory is pretty straightforward, but sometimes users will have a different domain in Active Directory than in IceWarp. To get around this, we need to check off the box in IceWarp that says Directory Service Domain is different from the domain name. In the box below, we need to specify which domain in Active Directory IceWarp should be looking for. All users synchronized with IceWarp still need to be a part of the domain you specify. If they aren't, you'll receive an error message. If you have users in Active Directory who don't have an email address, they likewise won't be imported. Now that we have IceWarp connected to Active Directory, if we create a new user in Active Directory within the domain we've set and with a valid email, it will automatically show up in IceWarp. Active Directory auto-synchronizes with IceWarp every five minutes, so if you want a new Active Directory user to show up in IceWarp immediately, just hit Synchronize Now for the user to show up in IceWarp immediately. The Active Directory tab contains several other parameters you can modify. Like the filter settings we just performed, they usually don't have to be changed, but can if you have a complex Active Directory. Usually IceWarp customers use the user group, principal name, and primary alias to sync with Active Directory. You'll also notice single sign-on can be set up under this tab. We'll cover how to do that in another video. What we've covered so far is basically all there is to syncing Active Directory. But should you ever have a problem, there's actually an advanced logging system in IceWarp to help you diagnose. If you go to the System, then Logging, then Debug tab, you'll find the AD Sync Logs. By default, they're turned off. If we turn them to Extended, however, and go over to the Logs folder under AD Logs, we'll find a full log. If someone wasn't synchronized, this will let you know why. From the log, we can see that 32 Active Directory users weren't imported because they didn't have a valid email address.
the last thing we'll want to cover in Active Directory is backup hosting. If you're running multiple Active Directories, you can place a backup hostname or backup IP to another server. This ensures that if your primary fails, you can synchronize against the backup hostname. As you use Active Directory and IceWarp, it's good to keep in mind that if you delete a user in IceWarp, they won't be removed from Active Directory. If you remove a user from Active Directory, however, they will be removed from IceWarp. If we delete a user named Frank from Active Directory, we'll see that he's been removed from IceWarp as well. Frank's folder and mail will be kept in IceWarp, however, and can be easily accessed. Thanks for tuning in with us about setting up Active Directory. In our next video, we'll be covering setting up groupware in IceWarp.